We're talking about normal and the Tomir too. Welcome back to the channel. I am Cody with The Shoein' with Cody. And today, we got a good one. We are talking about the normal Tomir 2. I've had this shoe for a little while now. I think I put about 33, 35 miles into this shoe and a ton of hiking miles as well as the family. And in this video, I'm going to break down the good, the bad, and the verdict. Should you buy this shoe? Yeah, this shoe right here. Now, before I dive into all the goodness about the Tomir, I do want to point out one thing. This shoe was provided to me by Normal, but they have no idea what I'm going to say in this video, and they never have an opinion on any of the content I make about their shoes. Now, I also have a favor to ask. Hit the like button and smash the subscribe button. Cost you absolutely nothing, but it definitely helps the channel. Now, let's sit back, relax, and let's talk about the Tomir. Because I'm a positive guy, I'm going to start with the positives. And there definitely are a lot of positives about the normal Tomir 2. So I've run in the first version, the Chirac, the Kabox, and this one. So I've definitely worn a lot of normal shoes. And I will say the Tomir 2.0 is really comfortable. I found that this shoe with this super critical foam didn't really need much break in period, which is a huge plus to me. With the version one, you needed a lot of miles. I think it took me 25 miles before I felt like the foam broke in. This right here maybe took five miles and it really then broke in and it felt really comfortable on those daily runs, long runs. It really definitely did the job. The other thing I do want to point out too is Vibram outsole. It's just money. I mean, you can still see some of the dirt on there. I've taken this on rainy runs, regular runs, and it always answers the bell. It really does. On the wet, rainy, muddy runs, no slipping and sliding. The lugs are definitely a good size on this one, and it just bites the mountain when I'm running. And really, honestly, no issues at all. Maybe I'm biased, but anytime I see Vibram outsole, I know I'm in good hands. And in this shoe, it definitely works out really nice. The other thing is I think I had a really great lockdown in this shoe. Really no issues. It's definitely a pretty stout heel right here. Uh, the tongue is not the most padded tongue, but it has pads where you want it, but it's pretty paper thin for overall. Um, again, great lockdown in. I've taken this on a lot of some gnarly trails here on the East Coast. No heel slippage and at no point did I feel like my foot was sliding back and forth. That can definitely be a big issue, especially when you're just bombing it down a hill. You don't want your foot sliding. No issues at all with that. And I will point out one thing. I feel like this upper is a little less rough than version one. So that definitely is a big plus in my opinion. Version one was very rough. The foam was definitely harder. They definitely gave this a positive over, uh, overhaul in my humble opinion. It looks the same, but in real, reality, this foam feels a whole lot nicer. I mean, just look at that. You weren't necessarily getting that with the Tomir one, but you are with the, the two. And again, this upper definitely gets the job done. So again, a lot of great updates that definitely are making the Tomir 2.0 a good one. With the good, you know there has to be some bad. And the first one I'm going to point out with this one, this is kind of like their do-it-all kind of shoe. The Chirac is like their race day shoe. This is the do-it-all. It's it's still more minimalist. So if you hate ground feel, this shoe might not be for you. Honestly, you definitely still get a lot of ground feel. I mean, the stack is not much. This is definitely, uh, I would say, more shaped towards what like Europeans are like, not Americans. I feel like Americans give me all the stack. Europeans like that ground feel. Um, they're definitely more in the mountains. We definitely have different taste in what we like in our shoes. And to, uh, normal being Killian's child, his baby, his brand, it makes sense that it would fall into that kind of category. The, the other thing I want to point out, the upper is definitely not as rough as it uh, previous versions, but it does run hot. Whew, it is hot in Pennsylvania, and it definitely can get a little steamy in here. The, the materials they're using are durable. They're great lockdown, but the materials are also just capturing that sweat, and it captures in all of it. Just It's just a hot shoe. That's the best way I could put it. It's a it's just a hot shoe. There's no way else to kind of beat around the bush. Your feet are gonna sweat. Um, I didn't necessarily feel like that in the, uh, the the first version, but in the second, it is definitely, definitely cooking. And then my last one, and again, it's a vain one, and I get it. All of you probably are rolling your eyes. Hate the color, all black, ugh. I just, I feel like I'm, when I put this on, 
It takes me back to my days when I was working as a busboy at a restaurant where you had to wear those black shoes that were slip proof when you're in the kitchen and things like that. Maybe that's the reason why, but there are definitely better versions, but this all black one just doesn't really do it for me. But honestly, that's about it for my dislikes. So you've heard the good and you've heard the bad. Now you wanna know, should you buy this shoe? Yeah, this shoe right here. And I'm gonna caveat this. If you like a, little, a shoe that gets more ground feel, that you can pick the paces up, and also get some gnarly trails, yeah, the Tomier 2 is definitely gonna hit a lot of boxes for you. You're gonna be check, check, check. But if you don't like ground feel, this shoe's just not for you. You definitely get ground feel. And it's funny, because this is like the more max cushion shoe of a uh, normal shoe. If you don't like ground feel, definitely, you're probably not gonna like this shoe. I'm just gonna be completely blunt. Um, also, you know, this is, I think, works best on gnarly terrain. When you're, you're East Coast, Beast Coast, works perfect on that. When I'm doing road to trails, not that great. So again, I think if you're a person hitting some gnarly terrain, want to go out there for a long day, because even though you're getting ground feel, it still feels really comfortable the longer I go. So again, for 170 bucks, I do think you get a lot of shoe. So I'm going to put this in the buy, but the caveat, if you hate ground feel, pass on the shoe. So there you had it. You've heard the good, the bad, and my verdict. Now I want to hear from you. Did you like this shoe? Do you love this shoe? Ugh, do you hate this shoe? Let me know. Drop a comment down below. And if you had any questions I didn't answer, let me know. I definitely want to make sure you're getting all the information you need before you buy this shoe. Thanks for checking out this video. Hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you all out on the run.